हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड आर्किटेक्चर टुडेज टॉपिक इज फंक्शनल यूनिट्स ऑफ डिजिटल सिस्टम इन दिस वीडियो आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द वेरियस कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ अ जनरल पर्पस कंप्यूटर व्हाट आर देयर फंक्शंस एंड हाउ द फंक्शनल यूनिट्स आर इंटरकनेक्टेड सो लेट एस बिगिन when we are talking about a digital system immediately a general purpose computer which is a well known example it always comes into our mind so we are always talking about a computer or a digital computer when we are talking about a digital system but other than computer there are some other examples which represents the digital systems you can name them like digital voltmeter digital counters electronic calculators digital displays these are all the examples of the digital system now we have to understand the functional units so a computer consists of five major components these components are input output memory arithmetic and logical unit and the control unit alu and control unit this is a part of the central processing unit cpu now let us have a look how to draw the block diagram for the functional unit representation of a computer system here you can observe there is a input unit storage is available then output and control unit and arithmetic and logical unit they form the part of the central processing unit right so this is how it can be represented now let us discuss the function of each and every block in detail means what is the function of input unit what is the function of control unit and all so let's begin with the input unit input unit is always required because there is a requirement to input the data means as if you can take a example of a keyboard if you are typing something it means whatever you are typing any number or any digit so accordingly the command or the data is being provided to the computer so that is actually being converted into the binary because computer deals with the binary language so that is why input unit is always required which are attached to the computer and these devices take input and convert it into the binary language so that computer can understand and perform the function and the most commonly used input devices are like keyboards i have given you the example mouse joystick trackballs microphones these are the input units second what is the control unit control unit it's a component which is a part of the central processing unit and the function of the control unit is to coordinate the operation of the processor means control unit coordinates and controls the data flow in and out of the cpu means data flow into the cpu and out from the cpu at the same time it also controls all the operations of the arithmetic and logical unit memory registers and related to the input and output devices it means its function is more for the coordination and control and this control unit it has a major function major role means it is also responsible for carrying out all the instructions which are stored in the program it decodes the fetched instruction interpret and accordingly send the control signal so the control unit which is a part of cpu it is also known as a nerve center of a computer system see how much important the control unit is next the central processing unit cpu it is commonly known as cpu and it is referred as the electronic circuitry within a computer means the whole sole responsibility lies with the cpu it carries out the instructions whatever being given by the programmer and perform the operations like arithmetic operations means addition subtraction division multiplication logical operations like and operation or operation not operation input output operations whatever being specified by the instructions so it is responsible for 
this particular task central processing unit see once the information is entered into the computer by a input device it means now processor will process it and cpu is known as the brain of the computer because it is the control center of the computer right this is the overall control center electronic circuitry of a computer next let's talk about the memory unit why memory is required memory is required when there is a requirement to store something and here data or some instructions there is a requirement to store it it means memory unit is also known as a storage area where programmers kept whatever is being running whatever the data is being required means anything any data or instructions for the past record or execution and memory unit can be categorized into two category primary memory and the secondary memory primary memory is a volatile memory type of and secondary is non volatile volatile means whenever there is a no power or when the power is switched off data will be lost while secondary memory it is a external type of memory like cd pen drive or dvd so this is how the information is being stored as i told you primary memory is a volatile form means when the computer is shut down nothing will be available and the examples of primary memory are ram and rom ram means random access memory where from where information or data can be accessed quickly efficiently rom is read only memory read only memory means from where information or data can be read only we can we are not capable to write it so this is the primary memory secondary memory is used whenever you have to utilize you have to store a large amount of data for a long term basis and you usually use a magnetic disk tapes cds optical disk so these are the examples of the secondary memory and this is a non volatile type this is also known as a external memory next alu arithmetical and logical unit what is its function means most of the operations when we are talking arithmetical means addition multiplication subtraction division logical and or not operation so this is being performed in the arithmetical and logical unit next and last is the output unit say as input unit is required similarly output unit must also be required in the case of the computer so it consists of the output devices which are also attached with the computer and this output unit converts the binary data which is coming from cpu into the analog which is analog means which is understandable by the human and the common examples of the output devices are monitor printer plotter so these are the different types of different examples of the output devices means it will be attached to the computer and whatever it is computer has is process that can be observed by the human or that can be required and generated in some represented form so that is the function of the output unit next is the interconnection between the functional components let us see how the different units are interconnected so the major parts of the microcomputer which we have discussed that is the cpu memory input unit and the output unit and all of these units are connected through the set of parallel lines which is known as the bus so you must remember that bus is a kind of communication system which transfers data between the components inside a computer or between the computers so there are three types of buses which is known as the address bus data bus and the control bus let us see how these units are interconnected you can see cpu memory input and output unit and the three buses address bus data bus and the control bus this is to overall the system bus here you can see some of the arrows are in one direction some of the arrows in the bi directional 
you must remember that the function of the address bus is to carry the address means from where the instruction is to be fetched or from which particular location data is to be stored so address bus these are unidirectional while data bus they are capable to carry the data and data can be taken from the memory data can be stored into the memory that is why the function of the data bus is the bidirectional data can be sent at the output it can be taken from the input right similarly in the case of the cpu so you must remember that data buses are the bidirectional the function of the control bus is more or for the coordination and sending the control signals among the units so this is how you can draw and explain the interconnection between the functional components by explaining the types of buses and what is the function of each and every bus thank you so much for watching this video